means of promoting an environmental consciousness that, that, that cross-disciplines from the scientific ones to the cultural ones so that people would grow up just like in the United States you grow up in, well, not anymore, but believing in apple pie and motherhood and whatever else one used to grow up. People in those places largely grow up believing that their livelihood is dependent upon environmental conservation. Uh, so one would need to be involved in that sort of uh, activity as a form of agency. But I have been thinking about a the, the, the difficulty of agency against something like global uh, gl climate change. Or I was thinking also of a different level, you know, sort of putting words in your mouth, <laughs> of contretrief waves in economy, where there are 60 year long waves that have, at least within capitalism, have been repeating certain cycles, economic cycles of, 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 of uh, accumulation, of crisis, so on and so forth, no matter what you know, one does, even, even the Keynesian kinds of interventions will not radically alter those 60 year waves. And when there's phenomena out, or when there's, with, where there's events or processes out there against which agency may, even if the kind of agency that we're talking about, environmental conservation, so on and so forth, may not radically alter those processes. One of the fascinating things about literature on climate change written by scientists is that, uh, that the climate change scientists have become extremely aware of these different cycles and different temporal horizons of thought that actually mark different disciplines. So it, typically, if the scientists, OK, uh, on the outside, the scientists speak of what they call carbon cycles which is like 100,000 years, 120,000 years. Economists, if you read the Stern report, economists can't think beyond 60 years because the discounting factor discounts everything back to zero by 60 years. You know? So political leadership can't think beyond electoral cycles. Now, it's because of these different timetables. You know, when we lived in a world where you'd, you'd, the, the scientists didn't produce this sense of urgency, about human agency and stuff. It worked fine, right? Because it didn't, it didn't matter so much. We assume that the, the mega scale is not part of what we have to bother about, you know, scientists are working on that stuff. The climate change scientists now see these different cycles as a problem, and which is one reason why they went back to policy, policy science and brought back into circulation this con concept of a wicked problem. You know, the problems we cannot solve, precisely because we can't integrate these different cycles. You know, our actions happen on different scales, but what we do have now, we have a cognitive awareness of the problem we are facing. Now, how you then persuade people, you know, how you go from cognition to action, how you persuade people to actually act, which will require politics of affect, it will require politics of all kinds of things, communities, you go back to culture, politics of culture, right? and actions on different scales. That's an open question, that's what I was saying. Or, but but, but I'm, I'm simply saying that, um, the, that, the fi that the equation of agency with so figures of sovereignty, it's still a valuable way to think, but it also has been rendered somewhat inadequate by the climate crisis. Um, it seems to me that we who are coming out of a colonial situation have no, no, have no choice. You can sit down and cry. You could do that. You could sit down and cry, but you get weak from crying. So if any time you have to get up to do something, it has to be changed. We have had to be involved with change, and change, of course, requires a change agent. Um, it's, it's you, you take that on to yourself, but it's a self, and from the self you have to move on to a, a community of change agents, and that that's a bit of a problem. You're moving into a political, a, a political with the ordinary P, a political as in politician thing, and how do the, the academic change agent and the politician operate is something that we also have to be able to, to be working out. So there's a lot for us of the um, ex-colonial societies to deal with. It's virtually as if you have to say, 
well, not exactly kill your memory, but kill what you know and begin again from what you want to know. So these are problems for, for, for the change agent. What do you want to know? And what you want to know, of course, involves who are you and who are you not just as an individual, but who are you as a group and what is the nature of the group, which involves, of course, um, geography as well as sociology. Are you Jamaican? Are you Caribbean? Are you part of Africa of the diaspora? This kind of question you have to sit down and be asking yourself continually as you work. work. And you go through one thing, I'm Jamaican, and if and then you find that there's another hurdle that you have to jump through. Jamaica is in the Caribbean. To what extent are you Caribbean? Um, you share the um, you share the history and the conditions of all the many people who came over here, um, tied up, and and didn't necessarily want to come. To what extent are you related to these people? Um, there's so many of these questions that are there, and I'm not quite sure that. Uh, my colleagues and I have really been thinking through all of these things. When we have disciplines, you're teaching sociology, or you're teaching anthropology, or you're teaching economics, you get bogged down in teaching that thing and not necessarily seeing the connection with something else. So it virtually calls for somebody else outside to come in and shake you up now or shake up things and say, um, how are these disciplines related? How are these ideas related? And begin to build a new thing. So um, I just want to say that we, 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 we get ourselves caught up into some things that we don't even know what, what they're about as yet, as we start off as agents. But we have no choice but to start. And then there's something, I don't know if that is what you're looking for, there's something called hope. I don't think I could operate without that thing. And as I mentioned hope, I must also bring in here as somebody who might be able to comment and help me out. I, I, I read a review, that happens to be a review of one of my books, Maya, where somebody said it's time for us to have a critical theory of the spirit. Okay. And I understand from my own self what he's talking about because hope and spirit and all of those things are things I, don't, I, I can't operate without because I walk blindly hoping that the next, the next hoop is something that I can get through. But as I said, there it is, the, the, the critical theory of the spirit. I don't know if anybody knows what that is. Well, um, I think that when you pose uh, the question of agency, um, we have to wonder, right? Uh, because that uh, I think that Deepesh uh, has uh, uh, put in front of us a dimension that many of us didn't have um, in our mind. We were not aware of uh, until, uh, at least, is, is my case. I have just uh, published a book that is um, uh, called La Escritura del Limite, the Writing of Limits. And I'm going to have to rewrite it soon. <laughs> Uh, after <laughs> your presentation, uh, and I think that uh, that's one of the challenges of today, the problem of how we define the limits and the boundaries uh, and the borders, uh, right, and how we decide to um, uh, operate a transgression against those limitations or to respect those limits or to redefine them, etc. And I think that globalization has uh, presented to us the challenge to think uh, not only at a, um, a global level, at an, a transnational level, but also the challenge to recuperate the local right, as uh, we have seen uh, in the work of uh, Erna uh, uh, today, and, uh, um, and there are many other examples of intellectuals and uh, creative writers and artists that are trying to recuperate and re-symbolize and re-define um, uh, the possibilities and the forms, the possible forms of uh, local agency, local action, in a way um, so we can counteract or establish some kind of dialogue with the challenges of globality, right? Uh, I have been also thinking lately of another dimension that is uh, in between the local and the global, and that I think that we need to recuperate also theoretically, and it's the um, uh, dimension of the regional. I think that at least in Latin America, we are seeing more and more that uh, there are regional logics that are still at work. We got rid of uh, the notion of area studies long ago. And I think that in some ways, we have to go 
uh, a step back uh, and, and rethink about the logic of regional thinking and uh, how the local, now the regional and the transnational and the global have to interact. But now we have the other uh, challenge that is the need to start thinking at a planetary level, right? Um, so uh, if we are confronted with that challenge, the idea of a planetary uh, thinking, uh, we have to accept that with that uh, level of thinking, uh, maybe we are also going to be confronted with new forms of subjectivity that will uh, result of that challenge, of the need to come to terms with that new dimension of thinking and uh, maybe action. Right? So new forms of subjectivity and maybe new definitions of what we understand by agency. Right? It cannot be the same. It's going to have. But uh, in the definition of agency that uh, Depeche was proposing, how you move from A to B or how you act from A on B, right? I would like to recover also other notions that I usually associate with that when I think about agency, a uh, word that does not translate very well in Spanish. Uh, mm, but I think that the notion of power is very, very important to, is of course included in the notion of moving from A to B, but I would like to make it explicit. I think that we need to um, reflect about uh, the notion of power and re redefinitions of powers at all of those levels or scales that we were mentioning before, the local, the regional, the transnational, the global, the planet, etc. cetera. Uh, so uh, the notion of power, and also I think that when we talk about uh, agency, we also imply the notion of project, right? It's not only to move from A to B or to have the power or to do it through these or those institutions or to exercise this kind of authority or power on reality is also to have a project, to act on B in a certain direction, right? To influence or to change or to transform B in a certain way. And there we go back to this intermediate level of uh, cultural policies and, you know, until we understand how to interact, how cultures interact and how powers interact and how power and resistance interact, it, we cannot redefine agency in a way that is going to be effective to act locally, uh, nationally, regionally, or even to, in, in the thinking of uh, the planetary uh, dimension. So I think that the notion, uh, that redefinition of limits that I find really, really challenging um, also mobilizes a lot of um, uh, disciplinary boundaries because we're here talking about uh, politics, uh, but we are talking about ecology, and we are talking about uh, an aesthetic dimension, but we are also talking about ethics, right? And we are also talking about philosophy, and maybe somebody mentioned the other day, maybe a recuperation of metaphysics, trying to bring into the term the best of it, right? what we can see or we can perceive or we can imagine. So from now on, we're going to be confronted with the need not only to act on the world that we have, but also to imagine the world that we could have or that we could cease to have if things don't go well, right? So uh, I think that that is a, a transdisciplinary challenge that is going to modify the notion of agency and the forms of subjectivity through which or from which we think the world. So uh, that is uh, the way in which I, um, I think uh, about things. I am uh, still um, um, moved um, by um, the um, um, suggestions uh, that, um, that you made the other day in your presentation about the need to think calamity and catastrophe what is the theory and what are the practices? It's a topic I haven't thought about it uh, until uh, now, and I thank you for the suggestion.